Teachings of Queen Kunti, Chapter 6 The Master of the Senses Yatha Rishi Kesha Kalena Devaki Kamsena Ruddhati Chiram Shucharpita Vimojita Hamcha Sahatma Javibho Vayaiva Nathena Mohur Vipadganath O Rishi Kesha, Master of the Senses and Lord of Lords, you have released your mother Devaki, who was long imprisoned and distressed by the envious king Kamsa, and me and my children from a series of constant dangers. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.8.23 Devaki, the mother of Krishna and sister of king Kamsa, was put into prison along with her husband Vasudeva, because the envious king was afraid of being killed by Devaki's eighth son, Krishna. The king killed all the sons of Devaki, who were born before Krishna, but Krishna escaped the danger of child slaughter because he was transferred to the house of Nanda Maharaja, Lord Krishna's foster father. Kunti Devi, along with her children, was also saved from a series of dangers, but Kunti Devi was shown far more favor because Lord Krishna did not save the other children of Devaki, whereas he saved the children of Kunti Devi. This was done because Devaki's husband Vasudeva was living, whereas Kunti Devi was a widow and there was none to help her except Krishna. The conclusion is that Krishna bestows more favor upon a devotee who is in greater dangers. Sometimes he puts his pure devotees in such dangers because in that condition of helplessness, the devotee becomes more attached to the Lord. The more the attachment is there for the Lord, the more success is there for the devotee. Devaki, the devotee who became the mother of Krishna, was not an ordinary woman. After all, who can become the mother of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Krishna agrees to become the son only of the most advanced devotee. In their previous lives, Devaki and her husband underwent severe austerities and when Krishna therefore appeared before them, wanting to give them a benediction, they told him that they wanted a son like God. But where can there be another person equal to God? That is not possible. God is a Samardva, that is, no one can be equal to or greater than him. There cannot be any competition. One cannot say, I am God, you are God, he is God, we are all God. No. One who says, this is a dog, not God, for God is great and he has no competitor. No one is equal to him, everyone is lower. Ekali, Ishwara, Krishna, Ara, Sabha, Bhritya. The only master is Krishna, God, and everyone else is his servant, including even great demigods like Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, not to speak of others. Shiva, Virinchi, Nutam. In the Shastra, the Vedic scriptures, it is said that Lord Krishna is offered respect even by Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, the topmost demigods. Above the human beings, there are demigods. As we human beings are above the lower animals, above us there are demigods, the most important of whom are Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. Lord Brahma is the creator of this universe, Lord Shiva is its destroyer, and Lord Vishnu, who is Krishna himself, is its maintainer. For the maintenance of this material world, there are three gunas or modes of material nature. Sattva guna, the mode of goodness. Rajoguna, the mode of passion. And Tamoguna, the mode of ignorance. Lord Vishnu, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva have each taken charge of one of these modes. Lord Vishnu of Sattva guna, Lord Brahma of Rajoguna and Lord Shiva of Tamoguna. Yet, these three controllers are not under the influence of the gunas. Just as the superintendent of a jail is not a prisoner but the controlling officer, so Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu and Lord Brahma control these three gunas and are not under the control of the gunas. But above all others, the supreme controller is Krishna, who is known as Rishi Kesha. The word Rishika means senses. We are enjoying our senses. But ultimately, the controller of the senses is Krishna. Consider my hand, for example. I claim this is my hand. I can fight you with a good fist. But I am very much proud. 
but i am not the controller the controller is krishna because if he withdraws my hand's power to act the hand will be paralyzed although i claim it is my hand and i shall use it when it is paralyzed i cannot do anything therefore i should understand that although i possess this hand by the grace of krishna i am not its controller this is krishna consciousness a sane man will think if this hand is ultimately controlled by krishna then it is meant for krishna this is a common sense understanding i claim this is my hand this is my leg this is my ear even a child will speak this way if we ask a child what is this he will say it is my hand but regardless of what we claim actually it is not our hand it is given to us because i wanted to use my hand in so many ways krishna has given it to me all right take this hand and use it so it is a gift from krishna and therefore a sane man always consciously thinks whatever i have in my possession beginning with this body and my senses is actually not mine i have been given all these possessions to use and if everything ultimately belongs to krishna why not use everything for krishna this is intelligence and this is krishna consciousness everyone is part and parcel of krishna mamai vamsho jeeva loke jeeva bhutah and therefore everyone's senses are also krishna's when we use the senses for krishna's service we attain the perfection of life therefore rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchyate when by by our senses rishikena we save rishiv kesha the real master of the senses that service is called bhakti this is a very simple definition of bhakti rishikesha sevanam not rishika sevanam service to the supreme master of the senses not to the senses themselves when we use our senses for sense gratification we are in maya illusion but when we use our senses for the gratification of the master of the senses that service is called bhakti in this material world everyone is generally using his senses for sense gratification that is maya illusion and that is the cause of one's bondage but when one comes to krishna consciousness when one becomes purified and understands that these senses are actually meant for satisfying krishna then he is a liberated person mukta purusha iha yasya hare dasye karmana manasa gira nikila shwapi avastha su jeevan mukta sa uchyate a person who acts in the service of krishna with his body mind intelligence and words is a liberated person even within the material world one should come to understand my senses are meant to serve the master of the senses rishi kesha the master of the senses is sitting within everyone's heart in the bhagavad gita 15.15 the lord says sarva sechaham hridi sannivishto i am seated in everyone's heart matah smriti jnanam apohanam cha and from me come remembrance knowledge and forgetfulness krishna is so merciful that if we want to use our senses in a certain way he will give us the chance to do so the senses are not ours they are krishna's but krishna gives us the opportunity to use them according to our desires for example each of us has a tongue and suppose we want to eat stool we may say krishna i want to taste stool and krishna will say yes take this body of a hog and eat stool the master is present krishna he will give us an appropriate body and remind us my dear living entity you wanted to eat stool now you have the proper body in which to do so similarly if one wants to become a demigod krishna will give one a chance to do that also there are 8.4 million forms of life and if one wants to engage one's senses in a particular type of body krishna will give one the chance come on here is the body you want take it but eventually one will become exasperated by using one's senses ultimately one will become senseless therefore krishna says sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam raja don't act like this your senses are meant for serving me you are misusing your senses and are therefore being entrapped in different types of bodies 
Therefore, to get relief from this tedious business of accepting one body and then giving it up to accept another and again another in continued material existence, just give up this process of sense gratification and surrender unto me. Then you will be saved. This is Krishna consciousness. At the present moment, our senses are contaminated. I am thinking, I am American, so my senses should be used for the service of my country, my society, my nation. Or else I am thinking, I am Indian and my senses are Indian senses and therefore they should be used for India. In ignorance, one does not know that the senses belong to Krishna. Instead, one thinks that one has American senses, Indian senses or African senses. This is called Maya, illusion. In material life, the senses are covered by designations such as American, Indian and African. But when our senses are no longer contaminated by all these designations, Sarvopadi Vinir Muktam, Bhakti begins. To think I am an American, why shall I take to Krishna consciousness and worship a Hindu god? Is foolishness. If one thinks I am Muhammadan, I am Christian or I am Hindu, one is an illusion. One must purify the senses so that one can understand. I am a spirit soul and the supreme spirit soul is Krishna. I am part and parcel of Krishna and therefore it is my duty to serve Krishna. When one thinks in this way, one immediately becomes free. At that time, one is no longer American, Indian, African, this or that. At that time, one is Krishnaized or Krishna conscious. That is what is wanted. Therefore, Kunti Devi says, My dear Krishna, Rishi Kesha, you are the master of the senses. For sense gratification, we have fallen into this material condition and are suffering in different varieties of life. Because this is the material world, even Krishna's mother was put into suffering. Devaki was so advanced that she became the mother of Krishna, but still she was put into difficulties by her own brother, Kamsa. That is the nature of this material world. The living entities in this world are so jealous that if one's personal interest is hampered, one will immediately be ready to give trouble to others, even to one's nearest relatives. The word color means jealous. This material world is a world of jealousy and envy. I am envious of you and you are envious of me. The Krishna consciousness movement, however, is meant for one who is no longer jealous or envious. By becoming free from jealousy and envy, one becomes a perfect person. Dharma projita kaita votra paramo nirmatsaranam satam Bhagavatam 1.1.2 Those who are jealous and envious are within this material world and those who are not are in the spiritual world. Therefore, we can test ourselves. If we are jealous or envious of our friends or other associates, we are in the material world. And if you are not jealous, we are in the spiritual world. There need be no doubt of whether we are spiritually advanced or not. We can test ourselves. Bhakti hi pareshanu bhavo viraktir anyatracha Bhagavatam 11.2.42 When we eat, we can understand for ourselves whether our hunger is satisfied. We don't have to take a certificate from others. Similarly, we can test for ourselves whether we are in the material world or the spiritual world. If you are jealous or envious, we are in the material world. And if you are not, we are in the spiritual world. If one is not jealous, one can serve Krishna very well because jealousy and envy begin with being jealous of Krishna. For example, some philosophers think, why should I Krishna be God? I am also God. This is the beginning of material life, to be envious of Krishna. Why should Krishna be the enjoyer, they think. I shall also be the enjoyer. Why should Krishna enjoy the gopis? I shall become Krishna and make a society of gopis and enjoy. This is Maya. No one but Krishna can be the enjoyer. Krishna therefore says in Bhagavad Gita, Bhoktaram Yajna, I am the only enjoyer. If we supply ingredients for Krishna's enjoyment, we attain the perfection of life. But if we want to imitate Krishna, thinking I shall become God and enjoy like Him, then we are in Maya. Our natural position is to provide enjoyment for Krishna. In the spiritual world, for example, Krishna enjoys 
and the gopi is a transcendental cohort goals supply the ingredients for krishna's enjoyment this is bhakti bhakti is a relationship between master and servant the servant's duty is to serve the master and the master supplies whatever the servant needs nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yo viradati kaman tata upanishad 2.2.13 the vedic literature informs us that krishna can supply all the necessities for one's life there is no scarcity and no economic problem we simply have to try to serve krishna and then everything will be complete if krishna desires there may be simple there may be if krishna desires there may be ample supplies in america for example there is an ample supply of everything needed although in other countries this is not so for instance when i went to switzerland i saw that everything there is imported the only thing supplied locally is snow this is all under krishna's control if one becomes a devotee one will be amply supplied with food and if one does not become a devotee one will be covered with snow everything is under krishna's control so actually there is no scarcity the only scarcity is a scarcity of krishna consciousness of course the world is full of dangers but kunti devi says because devaki is your devotee you saved her from the distresses imposed upon her by her envious brother as soon as devaki's brother heard that his sister's eighth son would kill him he was immediately ready to kill devaki but devaki's husband pacified him it is the duty of a husband to protect his wife and therefore devaki's husband said my dear brother in law why are you envious of your sister after all your sister will not kill you it is her son who will kill you that is the problem so i shall deliver all the sons to you and then you may do whatever you like with them why should you kill this innocent newly married girl she is your younger sister and you should protect her just as you would protect your daughter why should you kill her in this way he placated kamsa who believed vasudeva's word that he would bring all the sons so that if kamsa wanted he could kill them vasudeva thought let me save the present situation after all if kamsa later gets a nephew he may forget this envy but kamsa never forgot instead he kept devaki and vasudeva in prison for a long time ati chiram and killed all their sons finally krishna appeared and saved vasudeva and devaki therefore we must depend on krishna like devaki and kunti after kunti became a widow the envious dhritarashtra was always planning ways to kill her sons the five pandavas because by chance i was born blind he thought i could not inherit the throne of the kingdom and instead it went to my younger brother now he is dead so at least my sons should get the throne this is the materialistic propensity one thinks i shall be happy my sons will be happy my community will be happy my nation will be happy this is extended selfishness no one is thinking of krishna and how krishna will be happy rather everyone is thinking in terms of his own happiness how shall i be happy how will my children my community my society and my nation be happy everywhere we shall find this everyone is struggling for existence not thinking of how krishna will be happy krishna consciousness is very sublime we should try to understand it from shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita and try to engage our senses for the service of the master of the senses rishikena rishikesha sevanam then we shall actually be happy